Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. I have to be honest, you know what, today I feel like we're on the beach, let's just, uh, let's just relax, <laughs> let's just chill because I, look, after yesterday I still haven't gotten over it. I still haven't gotten over it. I, I, I'm still feeling lower levels, but I'm still feeling adrenaline. It's still going through, right? It's been 24 hours and I'm still feeling the effects from that goal that we scored in the, what was it? The 101st minute or something like that. I mean, it's, it's never happened in Premier League history, right? It's the latest goal ever scored. <laughs> it's just, and it's crazy. And in that fashion. So I'm still feeling it. But there has been a fallout and because there's been a fallout we're gonna get into the details what we have seen happen and um the the replays the camera shots we're getting what went down yesterday as Chelsea did get that 4-3 win against Manchester United in the dire 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 second second of the game um which in turn and as a result led to some very memorable moments from all the Man United fans that were streaming yesterday. Uh, hilarious. Um, and yes, we're going to milk it. I don't know if people have realised and some are trying to use this against Chelsea going, you're 10th, relax, like what are you celebrating the Champions League for? I'm sorry, but with the season we've had, yeah, I'm taking this. <laughs> I am because I don't know if I'm going to get a moment like this again, right? I'm going to milk this. I am going to milk the feeling that this moment has given us as much as possible. And I'm going to do it up until when we play Sheffield United on Sunday. I'm not going to stop. Why? Because this might be our season. That might be it. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen going forward? God knows of this football club. So I'm taking it. And you know what? If Man United fans want to come on and try and... I mean, everyone everyone lost their heads yesterday. I mean, who saw Goldbridge? Oh my goodness. He he lost it in a way that I didn't think was possible, right? T -t Telling us that he hopes we keep Pochettino because he's pants and all of this, yeah? Well, I'm like, well, listen, you lost 4-3 to the people that you are criticising. It's as simple as that. You you bottled the lead in the, in the last, 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 last possible second... To a team that has been dreadful this year and is currently sitting 10th and were 12th prior to winning the game yesterday. So, <laughs> look at yourselves. That's all I'm going to say. And as a result of that, by the way, Saeed, the man is a philosopher at this point. Saeed, you are a philosopher at this point. I am going to tell my grandchildren about you. <laughs> I am going to, 100%. This guy is coming out with some next level philosophical uh, sound bites that we are going to speak about in 80 years time. We just are. I might not be around in 80 years time. That's a long time, actually. Just bring it down to 50 or 60 <laughs> from now. Maybe I'll still be here. Uh, listen, unbelievable. So the Man United fans, hilarious. But talking about... Memorable sayings. Yesterday, we saw Mason Mount come on the pitch. We're going to start off with this, right? Mason Mount came on with five minutes to go and of normal time. And you could see his job was to just come down and shut down every single Chelsea attack. Just shut it down, right? Just run around and shut it down like we know Mason can do. And he's very effective at that. And he was doing that very effectively. You can see on my watch along, I was pinpointing out every single time he won the ball off us. It was crazy. But that's what you expect from a Mason Mount. There was a moment during that game where Mason Mount squared up to Enzo Fernandez. Now, some United fans are going to try and pin, pin it on Enzo and go, no, what was Enzo doing? No, go and watch it again. Mount walked over to, to Enzo. Mount got Larry because Man United were winning 3-2. Of course he's going to try and do that. I don't even really blame him, technically. That's what you're going to do in that moment. If your team's winning, you're going to try and rattle the opposition. He gets into Enzo's face. It gets a little emotional. And, you know, he pushes. He pushes Enzo. Enzo didn't react, right? Madueke tried to pull Mount back. Mount went, leave me alone, and he walked off. Cool. Afterwards, Mount tried to block Cole Palmer for the fourth goal. Missed. Didn't get there in time. We've seen that happen at Chelsea as well, by the way. Just saying. Mount can sometimes not be so perfect in that regard. Shoots. Deflects off McTominay, and it's him. 4-3. The crowd go wild. Limbs. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. No one in their right mind would have expected that to happen. It was it wasn't meant it wasn't this wasn't this wasn't even scripted. This 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 goal came from the heavens. It came from the heavens, right? It was just meant to be. Game's about to finish. 
P players are coming back to their, to their positions. Enzo decides to square up to Mason, right? And gets in his face and Mount's like, Mount's not really reacting. He's, he's just like, he's starting to laugh and giggle because he knows that he's basically, he's screwed at this point. United have lost the game. There's no coming back from this. The fans booed you before coming on. The, 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 the crowd have now gone wild. Chelsea have stolen three points and there's nothing you can do about it. So obviously he's rattled. But Enzo decided to go in and really, really nail it down. So what did he say to him? We got the translation. Check this out. Enzo Fernandez to Mason Mount. This is Chelsea, as he was patting the badge. I can't read the rest. <laughs> and then he went coward, coward, coward. So in, uh, in Spanish, if I'm not mistaken, because I did actually um, write, yeah, cagón, 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 cagón. That means coward or chicken. Apparently you can use it in whichever context. Coward, chicken, someone, a coward basically. He was constantly walking back and saying that, cag on, cag on. Now we got to ask, something clearly happened before Mace left. Before Mason left Chelsea, clearly something went down. Now, I have to be honest here. Um, I like what I saw from Enzo. This is irrelevant to the way that Mason Mount left Chelsea. I'm not parked that. I'll come back to that. Enzo and his reaction there, and what he chose to say and do in that moment, big up. It could have been to Mason Mount and it could have been to anyone else. I'd react the same. It's not because it's Mason Mount. It's because it's Man United. Right? Enzo in that moment, I think, showed to all of us that he gives a damn. Right? Proper. Like, he's, he's, fully, he's fully emotionally invested. <laughs> fully. Right? Good to see. Good to see. Good to do. Good to know. So that's that. That's going forward. I feel like we can trust Enzo more now. But in relation to this and taking its context, yeah, something must have gone down there, man. Something must have happened. Now, we know the way that Mason Mount left. Um, there's been two PR machines, if we're being honest here. There's been the club side and there's been Mason Mount side, 100%. What do we believe? God knows. I think it's obvious at this point, at least for the people that have tried to explain the situation, that there was a contract offer from Todd Bowley before the directors got hired. And then it got pulled. We know that. It did get pulled. Win Stanley then tried to dictate in terms of a one-year extension to then try and do something later and try and pen him down to an eight, nine-year deal or whatever it was. We know that was the case now. At the same time, Okay, that's where, you could, that's where you could sympathize with Mason Mount in that situation because a contract was taken off the table, right? Cool. Where you can't sympathize with Mason Mount is how everything was handled on his side afterwards, basically, right? And the, we know now he was talking with Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester United. Deal was nearly, nearly done with Arsenal. Deal was kind of close with Liverpool, and Man United ended up getting him in the end. We heard Ten Hag talk a couple of days ago in terms of how he wanted to leave and come to United anyway. Now, that's just probably bigging up United. Didn't help Mason Mount. But this is where, it, for me personally, it's, it's hard to really know whose fault it is. I, I'm, I'm at a point where I think it's probably both. But the reality is, he's gone. He's at Man United. And he decided yesterday, last night, to take that villain arc, right? To go down that route and just embrace being the villain. Cool, you're entitled to that. But it came back to bite him on the backside because Chelsea got a 4-3 win and Enzo stuck it to him in his face in the end. So it is what it is. At this point, it is what it is. You could argue, that should he have been booed? You could argue, as a Champions League winner and all of that, um, you know, what he contributed. Yeah, you could argue that maybe booing isn't right. But I wouldn't be praising Mount coming with Man United, no. So, <laughs> you know, at, at, at best, you could just ignore. Do you know what I mean? So it is what it is. But Enzo taking this initiative, cool. Good to see. Good to see. Like I said, not because it's Mason Mount, it could have been anyone. It's good to see that Enzo is actually fully invested. And like I said, I don't think he would have reacted like this with anyone else, but something must have happened with the way that Mount left Chelsea that clearly some players have not respected or don't like. And Enzo's clearly one of them. 
because men, you could see Enzo and Mount were quite tight. When Mount was at Chelsea, you could see they got along really well. And then all of a sudden, we're seeing this. Now, nah, something must have gone down. Something must have gone down, man. Behind the scenes, with the way that Mount left Chelsea, something must have happened that some players like Enzo did not like. It must have. So, the fact that he's calling him a coward, it speaks volumes. You don't just call someone a coward for fun. You just don't. You know, you can banter that, oh, you've lost the game, but you don't, you don't call someone a coward. There's something personal there. So let's wait and see uh, what, the more, what, what extra fallout we're going to get. But we now know what he told Mason Mount. Crazy. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to fly through some of the other things that have happened. So Pochettino spoke. He said this. I came from a different club and it is normal. You need to convince the supporters. I arrived to Chelsea in a different project to what it was in the last 20 years. I play with my reputation to come here also in a project that is to build a team with young players, talented players, given the possibility, the potential, top players. Basically saying that he's, he's risked his reputation coming to Chelsea at this time because of the project, because it's not easy to win over the fans, because it is different to the Chelsea of before where we had a team set up that was ready to just win. Um, and I understand that, but are you risking your reputation to an extent? But let, let's be honest, you're getting paid very handsomely and you've got a career that is, uh, you know, bringing you very nice rewards. So are you risking anything? Maybe not, if I'm being honest. Um, but in terms of like the reputation, the CV, yeah, I get he could have ended up managing Chelsea in a better time for sure. For sure, for sure. Because this project overall, I mean, like, look, let's be honest. Yesterday, it was unbelievable in terms of its end. But overall, the game was horrific, right? It was horrific. Now, the Sheffield United game on Sunday is where I'm, I've got all attention on. Like, we, we have to win that game. And we can't even think of trying to throw that one away. Because if we do, it's got everything that happened yesterday, <laughs> gone out in smoke. Void. Void. You've undone all of Cole Palmer's hard work, <laughs> literally. So, nah, we can't have that. But this is the project that we're on, so-called project. I'm still not in favour of it all. I'm still not, no. So I sympathise with Potts to that extent. But you knew what you were walking into, let's be honest. You knew what you were walking into. You didn't have to take it. You took it. So it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts on that. But talking about someone that could be coming in to replace him... Ruben Amarim has spoken. Let's see what he said. I cannot guarantee that I will stay at Sporting next season. I can't say that like Xabi Alonso did. We have time to discuss my future. We will do that at the right time. Now focus on winning titles and then we will see what happens. You know what I like about what he just said? Now focus on winning titles and then we will see what happens. That's actually, I, I, miss, I miss my manager just being, being able to say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to focus on winning the league first, yeah? And then we'll come to that later, you know? Um, let's see more. This is what's come out in terms of news in relation to Ruben Abram. We've had this journalist, Pedro Sepulveda from, I'm assuming Portugal, who has said there is less than 5% chance that Ruben Amrim will become Chelsea manager. And this is mainly because Liverpool are the main club in the running here. Liverpool are on the brink of getting him, it seems. But Graham Bailey decided to come out with this tonight. According to sources close to London Giants Chelsea, Ruben Amram is seen as the ideal successor should they decide to swing the axe on Mauricio Pochettino. Amram is someone Chelsea's hierarchy have admired ever since they took control from Roman Abramovich. You know, I've said this before. You know me. I'd want to bring in someone that I can just trust from the get-go, I like a proper winner, someone that I know I can just truly back all the way and not have to worry, right? And even if it were to go sour, I know that the faith is there and the trust is there. But if we're talking about the new gen managers, right? The new gen, your Alonso's, your uh, De Zerbi's, your even Amarim's, your Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann, a bit of a hybrid, but you get, the, you get the gist. I wouldn't mind Nagelsmann. If we could go for Nagelsmann, I'd take Nagelsmann. I think that would settle a lot of nerves. But that's not going to happen because he doesn't want to come to this project, understandably. Out of all the guys that have been rumoured that, uh, you know, is, is, is a possibility, we have to be realistic here in terms of who Chelsea are going for. I don't agree with it. But in terms of the names that we know are available of the new gen managers, Amarim is the only one, and I'm speaking from my gut here, just my gut. Amarim is the only one that has kind of got me curious. 
I'm not curious of Deserby. <laughs> I'm not. And yes, maybe there's a bit of Brighton PTSD there. But I don't want to go because I think he's very one-dimensional. And I think it's, if it backfires, which I think it will, it's going to backfire hard and it's going to crash. And I don't want it to crash and burn. Um, Alonso is not going anywhere. We know this now. Amarim is the one guy that I'm not sure on. But I'm curious, and I think there might be a winner in there. And just my gut is going, hmm, that's it. So Liverpool are more than likely going to take him. That's also a good, uh, you know, something that's, that's, that's interesting to know. But yeah, are Chelsea going to be pursuing him? Look, if I'm going to be honest, if there's any manager of the new gen that we're going to go after, if you're, if you're going to give me a choice between the Zerbi and Amarim, I'll be going to Amarim. That's my personal choice. Let me know your thoughts down below. Who are you picking? <laughs> Let me know. Um, now, news away from Chelsea before we wrap up the video. This is the latest from uh, Carrington, Manchester United. Breaking, the area surrounding Manchester United's academy base has been closed off after human remains were found just yards away from the facility. Uh, so, they clearly didn't take last night's loss very well then. <laughs> now, look, um, obviously we have to put some respect on, on, the, on the incident of itself. This is obviously not related to Man United, let's be honest. Well, it, it, it shouldn't be related to Man United. I'll be, I'll be scared and worried if it's related to Man United. I don't think it is. Um, but... Yeah, this is uh, obviously a bit mad. Um, God knows how this has happened, who it's who it's about. But yeah, Man United, not a good couple of days. Not a good 48 hours, 24 hours, whatever you want to call it. So now talking about not a good 24, 48 hours, this seems to be what's coming out of Man United too. Ten Hag, I think you're done. Check this out. The widespread feeling in football is that Manchester United have already made their decision and that Eriksen Hag will leave in the summer. I have to admire this. The, the widespread feeling in football. So you haven't got a source. <laughs> You've just said what, we're all, what we all think, basically. That's the news. But I have to agree to an extent. I don't think Ten Hag survives, man. I, I think, look, they're probably going to try and... Go, you know what? I think they're going to get Thomas Tuchel. I see Thomas Tuchel going to United. We'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts on that one. But... Ten Hag, I think, goes, especially after last night. Last night was, I, th I think, was the catalyst. Much like it could have been for Pochettino, I think last night was the catalyst for the whole fan base and even the club to now go, mm, okay, now you know what? I don't think this is going to go very far. And now I think Ten Hag is in big trouble. Big trouble. More than you can believe. <laughs> so, that's that. Now, quick one before we wrap up. This, this came out. There was news about a, pro a proposed luxury tax instead of um, points deductions given to clubs that violate PSR and FFP rules in the Premier League. This luxury tax, like they have in the NBA apparently, right? Where you just pay a fine and the more crimes you commit, the more money you pay. <laughs> so this is the latest. Ben Jacob says several clubs are opposed to a luxury tax, which is one option discussed in the change to the Premier League's financial rules. There is broad consensus PSR needs amending or replacing. Everton and Forest points deductions are seen at by many as not what the rules were intended for. Clubs did vote for PSR and we shouldn't forget that, but the market has inflated and allowable losses remain fixed. PSR is intended to protect the clubs against reckless spending and there is still an appreciation that is the correct approach by most clubs, but many also believe the punishments handed out to date don't fit the crime it's obviously a fine line since without strong deterrence clubs may willingly breach psr and just accept it's worth the punishment strong possibility the rules change this summer to align with uefa squad cost control measures so this luxury tax just to put it into fine english for you guys to understand before this goes on for half an hour we don't want it to 17 clubs out of the 20 need to agree if I'm not mistaken, is it 17? Uh, it's 17. 17 out of the 20 need to agree to the rule change for it to go forward, right? Um, that's not the case. It seems like several clubs are opposed, so it's not going to happen. End of story. <laughs> it's not going to This luxury tax business, not happening. So um, let's see what happens. PSR and all this, as far as I'm concerned, it's seen as a positive thing. I just think it's done more damage, if I'm being completely honest. Like... Um, 
yeah, I, I feel like it's just, it's limited everybody. It's not, it, I feel like it's not helping anyone. The fact that Everton and Forest have been the first ones to be punished, and those are clubs that are fighting relegation, right? Uh, you know, what are we doing here? It, people, people are saying that the little clubs need to be helped, or the ones that are at the bottom need to be helped to try and, you know, create more competition. Well, clearly it's not helping them. And, and the big clubs are the big clubs that are there, like it is said, that may, may have enough money to just take the punishment on the chin, you know? Anyway, give, give me a slap on the wrist, basically. That's it. You know, I, I don't feel like... I feel like it needs to be a major revamp of, of, of FFP. It's just... It's ridiculous. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you tomorrow for the preview to Sheffield United versus Chelsea because on Sunday... It's, uh, we're playing against Sheffield United and um, we're going to Bramall Lane and this is where it could be a banana skin or it might be a very nice day. I'll let you know the preview tomorrow, what I think, so make sure you guys are here. Check out the socials on screen and in the description as well and I'll catch all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you lot then. Take care and peace.